Danville, Ohio on a beautiful Friday night. Week three of high school football kicking off right here on the OH Report. One of these two teams will be 3-0 going into conference play. Will it be 2-0 Fairfield Christian or 2-0 Danville? We got all the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have, and it's coming your way next. Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Welcome you inside the Knox Public Health pregame show for this week three matchup between two unbeatens here in Division 7. The 2-0 Danville Blue Devils and the 2-0 Fairfield Christian Academy Knights. Hello everybody, my name is Travis Berardi alongside Ken Parrott. And Ken, it seems like good matchups follow us everywhere. Week 1 we had a pretty good matchup that turned out to be a blowout. Week 2 we had a couple of Division 7 teams in Danville's region go down to the wire. And now, week three, we get to see the defending regional runners up in person. Looks like we got a couple of high powered offenses going at it each other this week. Uh, Fairfield Christian scored 87 points in two games. Danville scored 122 points in two games. So, should be an exciting matchup. And let's get right into things with our pregame show and take a look at the team spotlights for the Fairfield Christian Academy Knights. Last year, they finished 5-5, five and five, won their first round matchup before getting beat by uh, River in the second round. They scored 42-plus points in their first two games, and they forced seven fumbles in two games with five recoveries, and that's a big one against a running deep offense like Danville. Yeah, they've uh, explo showed some explosive offense in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent quarterback and uh, uh, two, two very good receivers to go along with him. And one of those players that we just talked about was Gabe Welsh. 
12 of 25 passing, 319 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions. He also runs the ball a little bit, 11 carries for 23 yards and two touchdowns, but he has pieces around him. He's got two favorite receivers, uh, sophomore Rusty Hutchinson and junior Danny Blair. Danny had uh, 1,400 yards rushing last year, but he's become a target in, in the receiving role as well. As we are about ready to go here for the national anthem played by the Danville marching band. So we'll throw it down to the field for that here momentarily as we are in the Knox Public Health pregame show. Nicely done by the Danville marching band. We'll see more of them at halftime in the halftime band show. But speaking of Danville, let's take a look at their team spotlight. 61 points per game in two games. You talk about 40, over 42 a game. This team has been putting up the points and the rushing yards. 668 rushing yards in two games, Ken. Two games. That's an average of 334. And then defensively, just like last year, they're also getting the ball back so they can have more rushing yards. Five sacks, seven total takeaways. Senior Cole DeLauder had 167 yards on 17 carries week one with two touchdowns. Uh, this, this team can move the ball in a hurry. And speaking of Cole DeLauder, they are, he is our player spotlight. Once again, brought to you by Knox Public Health. 26 carries, 219 yards, four touchdowns. He is he was, at least when he was at East Knox, one of those out-of-the-backfield passing threats as well. Only one catch for 18 yards, but the rushing yards, he's doing enough already. He can be that that little out valve as well. Definitely. And and senior quarterback Walker Wekeser can run the ball himself. Uh, Week one, he had 67 yards on seven carries and, and three touchdowns himself. So definitely some, some offensive threats there and, and different options they can look at. As you take a look right now at Danville's coaching staff, what a job that they have done as well this season. Well, Last year coming in, taking them to a regional championship game and then, you know, a 3-0 start. This is a team that is hungry still. They they were inches away from clinching a regional championship and probably making it to a state championship game. That close, JFK, as you saw live and as you saw free on the OH report, able to make the throw in the end zone on fourth down. They got the two-point conversion. They went on, beat Newark Catholic, lost to Kirtland in a state championship game. But Danville thinks they should have been there last year they have a lot of returning pieces they added Cole to Lauder and coach actually thinks that they're a little bit better than they were last year which kind of surprises me but then you think about it he's probably right well he talked talked to both of us there before the game about how hungry the team has been all all off season had a great off season guys in the weight room every day and uh, great turnout and uh, you know he's got some senior leadership in some key roles there at the quarterback and running back and and uh, they're, they're going to be some true leaders this year. They, they're definitely going to be favorites in the KMAC, and, and I'm sure they're looking to make uh, a better run in the playoffs than what they did last year. Yeah, head coach Matthew Blum for Danville, just one of the, one of the better, well, one of the best young coaches, especially in Division 7, for what he did with the squad. But you got to remember, Danville, they were a perennial power in the late 90s, early 2000s, even in, from 2010 to 2015, 16. He's bringing that winning mantra back to the city. Definitely. You can feel it. You can feel it already tonight. The, the electricity is in the stadium and uh, should be a, a great matchup. 
as you take a look at Fairfield Christian trotting their way out here. And just a reminder, we're here at Danville, so there's going to be some fan blockage as well, but it's all right. We're here to call the game and explain it to you. There's going to be some big plays where these fans will be in the way, but it's because they're excited. And here comes the Danville Blue Devils 3-0 regional runners-up in Division 7, Region 25 last season. Now before we get started, we are going to have a bit of a special moment here, momentarily. From the Danville football squad. Longtime cameraman for Danville Athletics, all Danville Athletics, Scott Mickley, currently down in Columbus, getting treatment for, for cancer. We want to give our best wishes to him as we send it down to the PA announcer. But also to honor longtime program videographer Scott Mickley. For more years than we can count. For more years than we can count, Scott has provided videos of all Blue Devil sports at all levels. Please, we ask you to turn to the press box, to the platform on the south end, and join the team to give Scott a thumbs up as he begins his treatments at OSU. Scott, tonight and all season, the Blue Devils, in football and in all sports, we play for you. And talking with Coach Blum before the game, even in their warm-up shirts, the shirts they wear underneath their pads and jerseys, they're playing for Scott. Personally, I know Scott. He actually he helped the OH Report out a lot, especially the first times we were here. Built a contraption to put our camera up here for the first Devil Doll game we ever broadcast. The cool little press box he built in the gym and everything like that. So we hope, Scott, from all of us at the OH Report, know you're watching tonight. We wish you nothing but the best, and we hope to see you Maybe for spring sports, you never know. Maybe for fall sports, you never know. But we hope to see you back here in Danville. But now, we're just about ready to go. 2-0 versus 2-0. An early season matchup between two solid squads. Some bonus points in the playoff race. Up for grabs here early on. Both special teams have run uh, kickoffs and punts back for touchdowns already this season. So... Watch for something special here. And we are underway. Ball is going to be fielded by Wesley Payne. Left side across the 30 to the 35 to the 36. And that's where Danville will have its first food and kitchen supply. First down as we take a look at the offensive players for the Blue Devils. Walker Weckesser back out there at the quarterback. We talked about Cole Lauder. Wesley Norris, Josh Byers Jr., Briar Boshart as well. One substitution, Owen Gronberg will be replacing Kendall Carter tonight at the center position. First play from scrimmage this evening. It's just about 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, a beautiful night for football here. Nobody in the backfield. They're going to go five wide. Now in motion is DeLauder, and he's going to take the sweep right side. Gets a block, goes across the 40, up to the 43-yard line. Give him five. And just like that, a, a decent start for Danville. Let's take a look at the first Danville tire in alignment replay. Officially four yards on the carry, four and a half. For DeLauder. Brings up second down. DeLauder now going to be sidecar right, too wide to the left. Caleb Lucas in motion, the tight end goes left. 
And it's going to be a handoff to Lauder that way. He has a hole across hole. midfield. Cuts back. 40, 30, 45, 40, down to the 38-yard line. And actually, if it wasn't for exactly. his wide receiver, yeah. he might have gotten more out of that. Yeah. However, on the stop for the First and 19 yards still for a home and kitchen supply first down. He may have gotten a lot more of one for his own teammate there. But nonetheless, he still was able to get the afterburners on yep. and get some extra yards. First and 10, just like that. Third play from scrimmage. They're in the inside Fairfield Christian territory at the 38. Lucas in motion once again, two wide to the right. Weckesser is going to roll out. He's going to look to pass. He got has a, guy, a man he's open. Got a guy, two guys it's open. Complete. Nice. And that is Briar Bozhart for another home and kitchen supply first down. They're going to mark him down at the 22, a 16-yard pass and catch. He had a couple options on that play. He even had a guy open even farther downfield. And that's the play of Cole Lauder, what opens up. Getting yep. a couple chunk plays out of that. Those defensive backs kind of bite. And they lose their wide receivers. Walker Weckesser now wide receiver. Faked He's going to take a sweep. And get inside the 20 to the 14-yard line. Give him eight yards. It'll be second down. As we take a look at the defensive starters. Weckeser had a really nice fake there. A couple of them bit on that fake and followed him up the right side. There are the defensive players for Fairfield Christian Academy. Under head coach Marcus Pardon Dudish. Delauder sidecar right to Weckeser, who's back at quarterback. Weckesser, after the nine-yard run, he's going to fake the handoff, get it right side. Once again, that's Bozhart. No and Bozhart there. runs into Walks right the in. end zone for the Danville touchdown. Just like that, the Blue Devils offense gets going. To take a look at this replay once again, Ken, and the fake handoff, in interior defense just bit on that, and then a nice block downfield. Yep. You could have caught that and walked I could have caught that zone. and walked in, I think, yep. Javier Sica Gonzalez on for the extra point. Snaps down, kick is away, and it is wide left. But the Blue Devils are on the board first. They lead it with 9-19 remaining in the first, 6 nothing. We'll take a break. Buck Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Back here at Danville oh. and Fairfield Christian nice right back at you. Big return by T.J. Blair. And just like that, Fairfield right in business. Great blocking. Walker Weckesser, who kicked it off, just able to stop him. But short field here for Fairfield Christian. His brother brother returned one last week for a punt return for a touchdown, so. Oh, not Ball's where you want to start. Still on the ground, getting oh. picked up by Danville. And they're going to take it in for the score. Scoop and score break, Blake Colopy. 
Wow, what a change of events there. Colopy. But a flag is on the play. No, no flag. No, he's just the marking. PA announcer yeah. just said for the, um, the marking yeah. of the ball. So Danville. Welsh wasn't even looking on that snap. He was looking over at the sideline and, and uh, center heard or saw something and snapped it way too early, obviously. Colopy to the house. Snap down, extra point up, and it is through. We'll keep it here. But talk about momentum. It looked like Fairfield Christian got it right back, getting the midfield, and then one play just switches just like that. Yeah, had a nice return on the kickoff to, to answer the score, and, and uh, obviously not the way you want to start your, your first possession. Let's take a look at it one more time. And just, see, yeah, you're right. He was not looking at it. And Colopy, you know, he tried to dive on it, mishandled it. Colopy's right there, and he had a convoy behind him. His whole defensive line, a couple linebackers as well. Nobody was going to get to him. No. And we talked about that in the pregame, the takeaways that Danville had. Seven total takeaways in their first two games. Make that eight now in two games in three minutes. So Weckesser is going to try and kick this away. The first drive, I was trying to get to this before everything happened, but five plays, 63 yards, 241. Efficiency. It is well balanced. Running and, and passing. This time, TJ oh, Blair fumbled again. Fumbled the he ball fumbled again. again. Is he down? They're going to give it to Danville. Oh, my. And who was it? Blake Colopy. Colopy already. Two fumble recoveries and a touchdown. Man's already locking himself up to try and be a phenom for the week. You just see great stick by 81. That's Caleb Lucas, the tight end. You know, we, we talked to their coach before the game, and he talked about their inexperience and in playing a lot of uh, younger players and, uh, this is going to be a challenge for them to, to deal with this, this uh, situation. We'll see how they handle it. Five wide for Weckesser. DeLauder in motion. He fakes the handoff. It's going to be a quick strike right side to Lucas. Lucas across the line of scrimmage. And he's going to work his way towards the 30. Give him five yards. It'll bring up second down. So Lucas gets a quick five yards, brings up second down. Danville can really get control of this game, not even five minutes in if they can get it in to the end zone. Lucas motions left. Now he's going to go back to the right. Weckesser takes the snap. He's going to look to throw. Blitz. Steps into the pocket, lifts it in the air, oh, just over the reach of nice Lucas. Ball. That'll bring up third down. Weckesser just rushed enough that he had the. He had a nice step up, too. He had a little bit of pressure, and he stepped into it, had a nice ball, just a little bit overthrow. And it looked like actually it was his offensive line, and it got kind of pushed back into him, so it forced him to yep. loft it a little bit further. It'll bring up third down and five. 13 0 Danville. You normally don't call an incompletion uh, impressive, but that was an impressive incompletion. You see wide to the left is Wesley Norse. Hand off to Lauder. He's going to get four yards. He'll be short of the first down, but it's going to make fourth and manageable for the Blue Devils. Just got tripped up by number 12. That's Braden Stem, the linebacker. Hate to say a team needs this so early in the ballgame, but Fairfield Christian needs this stop here. 
They've run one offensive play, and that was a snap over the quarterback's head. They'd like to get an offensive possession only down two scores. It's going to be a sweep left side. And oh. lunging ahead is Bozhart, and he's got just enough for a home and kitchen supply first down. Just enough of a lean, as you see here on the Danville Tyron alignment replay that he kind of fell forward and got the first down. Got wrapped up early there, but uh, he kept his legs going and, and had enough momentum to carry him across the first down. First and 10 from the night 19-yard line. Coming up on seven minutes left here, first quarter. Bozhart sweeps around the lotter. The lotter's got an open hole. One man he needed to beat, but it was a shoestring tackle by Braden Stem. Give him 11, though, and another home and kitchen supply first down, down to the 8. Or down to the 14. Needed 10, got 10. And it's first and 10. Bows hard again, sweeping around the lotter. This time, Weckesser's going to throw. He's going to step up, throws it to the end zone. Nice. Reaching in. Yes, touchdown, touchdown yep. Anvil. Josh Byers, Jr., the junior tight end, finds space in the zone. Once again, a great job of stepping up into that hole. He's being rushed to the left side and uh, had a nice throw on the run there. So Danville looking to make it 20 to nothing here with 624 left in the opening quarter. And did that sneak over the bar? No, it was ride right. 19 nothing your score here with 624 left in the opening quarter. We'll take a break. So we've had one great return, we've had one disaster. <laughs> Two, well, actually, uh, disa uh, on, one on disastrous on, disaster on, and one On fumble, kickoff yeah. returns is what I'm talking about. 19 yeah. nothing, Danville leading here. Midway through the first. That's going to get taken by Rusty Hutchinson at the 10. Reverses his way back, but he's not even going to make it to the 20-yard line. That's where they will start with their home and kitchen supply. First down, as we will show you. The offense. Four. Fairfield Christian under Gabe Welsh will finally get a chance to see Danny Blair and Braden Stem in there. TJ Blair, Hudson Harper, Jimmy Schmitz also wide receivers for this squad. Coach was bragging before the game about how great of a quarterback Gabe Welsh is, how much of a leader he is. He is. This will be a true test of his leadership skills. See if we can get him to calm down here. They got that diamond formation to the left, one wide to the right. And it's going to be a quick hitter. Oh, oh! hit! Walker Weckesser nearly had himself a pick six. He read that perfectly to take a look at the replay. Nearly. Another score for Danville here. That shows me how well coached they were for that play. They knew exactly what was happening. Second down and 10 from the 18. On the Spearman Financial Services and Danville Food and Supply scoreboard. 
Blair, sidecar right, he's gonna get the handoff. Gets right down the center of the line and he'll maybe just get two yards and it'll bring up third and long. Brought down by a host of defensive linemen. I see 53 in there, 51. <laughs> That's Ricketts, Lepley. You name them, they probably had a hand on that tackle. Third down and eight. Last thing they get a Ford here is three and out. Snap back. Looking to pass. He's going to go deep. He has a man, and it is caught. Nice ball. Rusty Hutchinson. A big play for Fairfield Christian. Gets into Danville territory. To take a look at the replay, he just got past the secondary. And a big play. Watch some highlights of the previous two games. He's had some big catches in both of those games. Thirty-seven yards on the completion, and it's a first down. It's going to be a handoff left side to Rusty Hutchinson, and he is not going anywhere. He's going to lose a yard. He'll bring up second down. So it'll bring up second down and 11. Yards. 21 players on this Fairfield Christian roster. Coach Marcus saying that he they were ecstatic. This is the first time in a long time they've started off 2-0. And they welcome the test against the Danville squad because if they do make the playoffs, they're going to be playing a team like Danville. So this is a good early season test. Hand off to Blair. Nice. Has a bit of room. Nice cut. He's going to get five yards back and will bring up third down and six. Danny Blair carries. They fake the hand off the sweep to Hutchinson, gives it to Blair, a 1,400-yard rusher from a season ago. And now you feel comfortable you're in a four down territory so you don't have to get it all at once here. Desperately needing a score here as well. And it's going to be a handoff oh, nice to cut. Blair. Nothing there. But he made that first cut and then there were about five Blue Devils right there behind him. We got a waiting. flag down. Maybe a hold. We'll see momentarily. Got to think, maybe coach declines this if it's against Fairfield. Might be Christian. something on the defense here. So we await the call from the, uh, the ref. Yep, it's a defensive penalty. Late hit maybe or something going on in that pile. I don't know what, what they're calling. But. Face, face mask. mask yep. Five yard face mask. Five yard penalty, so the face mask will repeat the down. Five yard face mask penalty. So that will now make it third down and about four yards. A big break there after the loss on that third down run. Very big. And again, you got two plays here to get four yards. Sun's starting to go beyond the tree, so I can actually see now. Nice. <laughs> it's going to be a quick handoff, and Blair might have got a yard, but he's going to be way short of the first down. That was Gabe Welsh handing off to him, but nothing doing. And he'll bring up fourth and five. Are they going to punt? Wow. Danny Blair back to punt. That's a shocker. Interesting play call exactly. here. Exactly. Fairfield. And they are going to kick it off. It's going to get fielded at the 10. Bozhart. 
cuts back and gets taken down. Nearly broken that for a big return, but instead, Fairfield Christian did their job and they backed Danville inside their 20. Maybe you think if they get positive yardage on third down, they go for it? Could be. Uh, I think when you're down 19, nothing, no, that you got to create some, some points here. And you're that close to the goal line, you, you might. Uh, well, We'll just find out. We'll, we'll find see if the out. defense yeah. can step we'll up see. here. Play a little uh, position ball here, old trestle ball. Last scoring drive for Danville. Six plays, 35 yards, and 222. Handoff left side. That's oh the Wesley Norris. One he has beat. the hole. Beats one tackler. One has more to one beat. more guy to beat. Cuts back, still on his feet. And he gets into Fairfield Christian territory on the big run. Huge gain there. Forty six yards on the run by Norris. Home and kitchen supply first down as we get the two minutes left in the first quarter. So the defensive philosophy did not work for Fairfield Christian. Danville right back in business. Weckester takes the snap with one hand. Jukes the tackler, still on his feet inside uh -oh. the 30. He's down. Ground He's down. forced that as yep. he gets eight, maybe nine yards on that carry. He just overpowered the first two guys that hit him. And now they're going to give him the first down. Ten yards on oh. the carry, and it is a home and kitchen supply first. First and 10 from the 27. Weckesser, blitz coming, and he gets it off and completes it. Lucas inside the 15. Another first down, and Weckesser somehow avoided the tacklers. Two guys in his face. He was coming, he was getting taken down as he threw that Unbelievable. off. Unbelievable. 14 yards on the play, and another home and kitchen supply first down. as the Devils look to try and make it four for four on offensive possessions. Weckesser hands it off to DeLauder. DeLauder left side across the five, works his way close to the end zone. He's going to get marked down at the three, close to a first down. Bring up second and very short. Takes it down close to a first down behind the block. He had a guy wrapped around his legs, and he still got two or three more yards. Nine on the carry, it'll be second and one from the four. And now I think the refs are gonna measure. And now they're giving him the first down. So it is a first and goal. He needed 10, he just got 10. First and goal from the four. DeLauder. In the Wildcat, he's going to take the snap himself. It's a jump, jump pass. pass. Touchdown. Nice. The jump pass is back in Danville. Josh Byers, Jr. I asked Coach, hey, your jump pass specialist graduated last year. Are you going to see it this year? He said, oh, yeah, it's still in there. <laughs> and DeLauder. Oh, my favorite play in high school football. Right up to the line. Jump. Touchdown. I just watched the uh, Florida oh, special yes, on the Netflix, swamp. and they were talking about the jump pass. I wa watched that this week. 25 to nothing is your score. And they're going to go for two to try and make this 27. Weckesser with the lauder to the right. Man in motion. He's going to look to pass. Fakes it. He's going to scramble and try to go for it himself. He's he has the, the corner. corner. He's got it. Two points, Danville. Take a look at the replay here. Just gets the corner. 24 seconds left in the first quarter. Danville already has this one in hand. Bucks Savings Bank. 
you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Five plays, 83 yards, minute 47. Efficiency, once again, for now, these Devils. I've only seen Walker Weckeser for a quarter, but what, what an impressive display so far. Five for six on passes. He's got a 10-yard run plus the two yards he just got for the, the extra points. Uh, and, and making completions on the run and, and under pressure. Uh, the kid's for real. And this is a team... Like we said, Coach said that they had 30-plus kids in January coming to, to uh, lifting and workouts in the winter. Up across the 30, maybe to the 31, too. There's still a rugby scrum. That's where we'll get marked off as another home and kitchen supply first down. And now a chance to take a look at the defense from Danville. Weckesser, DeLauder, Hackman, Mickley, Bozhart, Lucas, Nisley, Byers Jr., Colopy, who already has two fumble recoveries and a scoop and score, Kendall Carter and Wesley Payne for this Danville squad who has just been putting big numbers up offensively and defensively this season. 16 seconds left here, first quarter. 27-0, Danville. Takes the snap, looking and over the head of the receiver, Hampton, but we're going to get a flag. Ooh. We'll take a look at the replay. Was the push before or after? It's going to come right at your screen, folks. We'll take a look. Was it catchable? That's true. I, I'm not even sure if it is catchable. That's interference anyways. But Nonetheless, it's a 15-yarder and the second first down for Fairfield Christian. I'm starting to wonder if it has a little bit of a sympathy flag there. <laughs> so with nine seconds left, another home and kitchen supply first down. Probably the last play of the quarter. Another muffed snap. And we'll see. He got it. He does get it back, and that's going to end the first quarter. Danville is for real, folks. 27 points here in the first quarter. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Second quarter action. Bucks Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. One play into the second quarter, and it wasn't much doing, as we'll show you the replay of as we came out of break. 
It was the Blair. Lost a yard, and it'll bring up third down and 11. Danville with 27 points in the first quarter. Blake Colopy, two fumble recoveries, one scoop and score on defense. They're going to look to go deep again, and it is over the reach of Rusty Hutchinson. It'll be fourth down and a punting down. So we take a look at the replay here. When you take away the run as well as Danville's defensive line is doing, it, it's just making the offense struggle on, on both ends, passing and running the ball. Forced to punt again. Snap back. Kick nearly blocked, but it gets away. And it will take a bounce for Fairfield Christian and go out of bounds at the 14-yard line. And that is where the Blue Devils will start first and 10. Also, on the OH report this evening, taking a look at Hillsdale, Loudonville, the new entry, leading 3-0 over the Blue Devils, over the Falcons. We were in Falcon country last week for that great game against Lucas. Jack Fick is the quarterback, three rushing touchdowns to knock off the Cubs, 21-17. Garrett Parlett, Storm Blunchley on the call of that one with our other KMAC squad. Also, an update from Mapleton. Mapleton strikes first at lead Northmore, 8 0. Handoff sweep right side. That's Byers Jr. We flag got a flag down. on the play. Two flags. And it looks like that's going to be coming back for a hold. Flag on the play. And we'll see. Yep, he motioned hold. Yeah, and I see it right. Yeah, he keeping. They're going to get Caleb Lucas. You saw on the outside, he kept the grab on the outside of the jersey. So that'll be a 10-yard penalty. Third penalty of the game for Danville. They'll be backed up to the eighth. Black Esser hands it to the lotter. Gets some of that yardage back. Still won't go down as he gets pushed out at the 10-yard line. That'll bring up second down as you take a look at the replay. And the tail end of this is just nobody can take him down. You can tell the time in the weight room is paying off. Give him four yards. It'll bring up second down and 12. He's carrying kids every time he carries the ball. That's K-Mac football right there. Yes. Smash mouth down your throat. Yep. There's some teams that can pass the ball, but this is mostly a running conference. Blue collar. Weckesser fakes the handoff, throws it. It's complete. Byers Jr. gets the first down. He's going to get taken down at the 29-yard line. Give him 16 yards, but another flag on the play. Take a look at the replay, see what we have. And it looks like we have a hold after the catch on Wesley Payne. Yep, he's taking a hold again. So another penalty, it's going to back them up. However, it was 11 yards downfield, a 10-yard penalty. So they did net one yard, bring up second and 11. Twenty-seven nothing. So we go under 10 left in the half. Weckesser awaits the snap. He gets it. 
getting rushed. Rolls out. He's oh. going to get taken down. Hold on to it. And we're going to get a flag. Intentional grounding. The question yep. is, was it in the end zone? Walker Wickers is attacked in the backfield. He's getting up pretty slow, too. Flag on the play. We'll see where the penalty happened. If it's in the end zone, that's a safety. Nonetheless, it's a loss of down and a spot foul. You're up 27 to nothing. It's it's the time where you just, just eat the ball. Trying to do too much here. Don't want to get hurt. You know. He's coming out, Travis. Hold that arm. This is not a good sign. Hopefully it's just a stinger. Wave it off, the flag. They're going to wave it off, so... So he must have been taken down for the sack before the throw. So it will be a loss of down. A 12-yard loss as Jacob Hackman, the junior quarterback, will come in and lead the squad. you got to think, backed up this far, it's going to be a handoff or some sort of run play. I'm guessing he had the knee down first before the throw. That's why they waved the flag off for intentional grounding. Update from Hillsdale. Falcons scored. They lead Loudonville now 7-3. to three. So, so why is the, Wait, now they're saying... Why is the ball coming saying, out? Are they now saying there was a player in... Let's, let's take a look at the replay. Let's just look at the replay. Was there somebody in the vicinity? I mean, right here is DeLauder. But he's on the opposite side. Did a They're calling that an incomplete pass. Yeah, was there a receiver in the area? Unbelievable. Yep, that's what they're calling. So now, as negative rush yards go off the clock, it's just an incomplete pass as DeLauder now will come into the Wildcat. Third and 11. He's going to keep it. Gets a couple blocks. Trying to cut outside. Nice open field tackle by Rusty Hutchinson. That time he stayed up. low and brought the big kid down. Yeah, sometimes you don't have to wrap up. You just have to get down by the legs and trip them up, and that's exactly what yep. he did. And another flag on the play. So hold the phone. It's going to be declined, the hold, and it's going to bring up fourth down. And actually it was a loss of two. So a great open field tackle. It's going to force the first punt of the game for Danville. Fairfield Christian taking advantage of a couple penalties by the Devils, and they're going to get good field position if they field the punt cleanly. Two returners out here for Fairfield Christian, Hutchinson and Braden Stem. Kick is away, and, let it and roll. they're going to let it roll, and it's going to take a nice Danville bounce inside the 45 to the 44, and that's where Fairfield Christian will have Good news is I see Mr. Weckeser on his way back out to play defense. So maybe just a little bit of a stinger. Yeah. The athletic trainer just, you know, massaging it. That's got to be a big relief for the Danville sidelines. Taking a look at Hillsdale. Loudonville, their possession. There's a nice crossing pattern for a first down. 7-3 the score. 16 to 6, Northmore getting beat by Mapleton. So a couple touchdowns and two point conversions by Mapleton. Northmore unable to get the two point conversion. Trail 18 6. It's going to be a hand up off the middle and one yard gained there for Danny Blair. It's second down. I'm told Northmore had another touchdown called back for a holding. So they're going to give him two officially on the play. It's second and eight. Under nine, the play here in the first half. Blair just to the left of Welsh. Welsh is going to look to pass. Throws it, and it's caught by Hutchinson. Rusty reaching for the first down. He's going to be two yards short. So a six-yard play brings up third and short. 
Nice job by Rusty, just sitting inside the hole in that zone. Thrown right to him. Brings up third short. Third and two. Welsh throws it, and it is tipped oh. and nearly caught by another receiver, but drops fourth down, but another flag. And that's in a secondary where you usually see a hold. Had some pressure on him that time. He threw that a little sooner than he wanted to throw it. It's actually a legal man downfield. It'll be declined and a fourth down and two. And I actually like this call by Coach Blum because this sets up a fourth and two situation for his defense. You're up 27 nothing. Let's see what the defense can do. Yep. And instead, it's just going to be a punt. Yep. Yeah, they punted. So Fairfield Christian for the second time yep. down big inside Danville territory. He's going to punt it away. Oh, Snap way is over the, head. the kicker's head. Blair's got to go back. Now he's just going to run it across the 30, taken down at the 35, oh. and Danville takes advantage of another bad snap. Field through Christian centers are having a rough night so far. So another golden opportunity for the Devils. 35 yards away. Leading 27-0. Lucas in motion. Weckesser back out there on offense. Hand off to Lauder. Has a hole, hole across the 25. The 20 still up and reaches closer to the 15. They're going to have him down at the 18. He's just so strong. And a home and kitchen supply first down. 17 yards on the play. Offensive line created a big hole, and uh, he's just so strong when he gets out in that open field like that. It's, it's tough to bring him down. And you also saw there yards after contact. He ran right into a linebacker, bounced off of him, and got seven more yards. He's been doing that all, all half. Fakes the handoff, throws right side, caught by Nate Stevens, who slipped, and he's nice going to go juke. towards the end zone. He's in. Touchdown. Nice juke. Nate Stevens. <laughs> 17-yard pass and catch to Nate Stevens, and it's a 33-0 game now. Pending the extra point. Danville now five of six on offensive possessions getting into the end zone. Only took them a quarter and a half to get halfway to their season average of 61. Snap down, extra point up, and this one's right through and good. 6.50 left here in the first half. Danville's got in this one in control, 34 nothing. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Six fifty left here in the first half, and it's all Danville thirty-four, nothing. Travis Barardi back here with Ken Parrott, and Ken surgical. Danville has been. They've taken advantage of some miscues on defense. They've done it on offense. It's 
Only thing it's hurting them was a couple penalties that cost them from being perfect on offensive possessions. Yeah, they've had a stretch there where they had three or four holds in a row there. But, uh, yes, there's just so many weapons. You know, Cole DeLauder, as we mentioned, he's so strong. And and Walker Wackeser is, is just an impressive quarterback. And, and uh, the offensive line's doing their job. Kick taken across the 20, 25, 30. Cuts back to the 31 and taken down. So a decent starting position for Fairfield Christian here with 6.40 left in the half. Take a look at that. That was TJ Blair. Gronberg on the tackle. Owen Gronberg, the freshman offensive line in the end. Always got to love when you get put into the stat book and in the newspaper with a tackle there as a freshman. It's always a fun feeling. I remember that. Although my tackle was the running back who ran me over and just <laughs> fell with me. But I'll take it. It's a tackle. We got motion here. You're calling a defense. Yep. Got too so excited the here. Across the line. Fifth penalty against Danville. The lone blemish today for them. Penalties. Welsh back to pass. Looking, and it is picked. Picked off. Intercepted. Walker Weckesser. Third turnover of the game. And Walker nearly had one earlier. This time he read the curl perfectly. Runs the route for him and picks it off. Weckesser returns to the 34-yard line. First and 10, Blue Devils. Walker doing it all tonight. Just glad to see that hand or arm is not obviously bothering him. DeLauder in the Wildcat. Lucas in motion. He's going to roll out the pass. Getting blitzed. Stiff arms a tackler. Looking, throws it off, and... He could hit the ground. Yeah, it hits the ground. Incomplete. It'll be second down, but take a look at the stiff arm real quick. Yeah, he should have been brought down for a loss. And kind of a smart play there by DeLauder. The only place you could throw it to Weckesser is low yep. there. Yep. So he just dumped it off. If it's a catch, a catch. Nothing hurt there, though. Yep. He'll bring up second down. Avoided being brought down for a loss. Second and 10. Weckesser hands off to DeLauder. Has a hole. Breaks a tackle. Breaks a wow. second tackle. Ran the guy over. It's a first down. Oh, that's a stiff arm, Travis. <laughs> Take a look at the replay right here. And right there, and boom. Just a stiff arm pushes him down. Oh, my. I sound like a broken record, but the strength. 13 yards on the carry. The water gets another handoff. Two more stiff arms around the corner. Reaches for the end zone. Down at the two. But it'll be first and goal. After the carry of 16. Nice adjustment there. He didn't have a, a hole in the initial play there, and he cut out to the left side, and there he goes. So after carries of 17 and 16, I told you wrong, Ken. My apologies. They weren't on a 30. They were on a 34 when he ran that first one. Okay. First and goal. DeLauder. Wide open hole, bounces in towards the end zone. Touchdown. Single Touchdown. Touchdown. A four-yard run makes it 40 to nothing. At first, you could drive a truck through the hole that the offensive line made. 
And he was just able to lean forward and get in. So Sika Gonzalez on for the extra point. Snap down, kick away, and this one's perfect. It's 41. We'll take a break. 517 left in the half. Danville rolling. from around the KMAC. Thanks to our PA announcer. 20 to 13, Bucyrus over Cardington. 21-7, Colonel Crawford over East Knox. Your score here, 41 nothing in favor of Danville. Also last time we saw 16-6, Mapleton over Northmore. Still is 16-6. Squib kick just received and falls to the ground. Braden Stem just falls on in. It'll be first and ten. Make sure to stick around for the half. Second quarter score, Centerburg zero, Worthington Christian zero. Worthington Christian and Centerburg in a zero-zero tie as well. But make sure to stay tuned at the half. We'll have the halftime band show. Danville. We'll have their band out there. We'll have them at the half. Snap back, throw by Welsh is going to be caught out of the backfield. And a nice run by Blair. Danny Welsh is pass complete to Danny Blair. Danny gets five. It'll bring up second and five. Little Welsh little took a big hit there. A big hit. Looks like he's okay, though. Yep. Needless to say, he did not see a defense like uh, this one in the first two games of the season. Snap back, flag Try. on the play. It's going to be picked. Picked off. I think they might have blown the play dead, though. False start on the offense. So it erases the interception, but it will back them up five yards to the original line of scrimmage. Rare instance for a penalty saves your butt. Another score from here on the OH report, 24-0 Highland leading Crestview. Wow. Snap back, pass across the middle is incomplete. It'll bring a third down just he wide of TJ Blair. Score from Lucas, the Cubs leading Smithville 28 to 7. Another a lot of people saying the Cubs didn't have a chance in this one. I was not one of them. You and I said best 0 2 team in Division 7 yep. was Lucas. Yep. They're showing it tonight. Hand off up the middle to Danny Blair, and he's going to get those five yards right back, Danny but it's going to bring up fourth down. Made me a little nervous there how he's holding on to that ball. Wait for it to get popped out. 
fourth and five for the night from the 38 yard line. So fourth and five, and I believe Fairfield Christian is going to run this down and take a timeout. And that's exactly what they will do. 4.05 left. And let's do this. Let's send it to Hillsdale. Get you the call from Garrett and Storm right here on the OH Report. Pickus in shotgun. He's got Bo Moody to his right. Drops back, rolls out. He's going to look for the end zone. Jarvis back right corner. Toe drag flag. Touchdown. Oh, my goodness. How about that? They went to Jarvis Storm on the previous possession. Matt Sprang denied it. But this time, Jarvis will not be denied. Perfect pass from Fickus. And the toe drag in the back corner near the pylon. Touchdown, Falcons. It's going to go up 13 to 3 pending this PAT storm. Beautiful pass from the QB Fickus. Fickus to Jarvis. I believe, I don't know, that kind of looked like an NFL catch. That one looked pretty. So we tuned in at the right time to watch that heck of a play by Braylon Jarvis. Hillsdale looking to make this an 11 point game just before the half. While back here, Danville's got this in control. They're going to get the ball back before the half. Snap's going to. Kick's going to take a nice bounce inside the 30, down to the 28, and that's where Danville will take over, but another flag on the play. Flag on the play. Personal foul against, Fair, against Danville, actually. The call is a personal foul against the Blue Devils. So, I have a feeling, you know, obviously we've seen a lot of positives here, 41 nothing, but going into halftime, I'm sure uh, one of the key discussions is going to be the penalties. Discipline. Discipline, mm -hmm. definitely. And, you know, Fairfield Christian team, they're, they're probably a little frustrated right now, down sure. big. They might be, you know, shoving a little bit, but it's always in the game, this person that throws the punch or the shove second. Yep. The retaliation is yep. always the one that gets yep. the one called. The 14 yard line after the penalty. First and 10, Blue Devils. So it'll be a first and 10. Black Esser with the water, probably their last possession of this game. And DeLauder's got a oh big my. hole. And only T.J. Blair was there to make the big stop, or that would have gone to the house. Another huge hole. So take a look at the replay. Seventeen yards on the carry. They were at the thirty-two before the penalty. Got fifteen plus two more back on one run. Snap back, hand off the lotter again. Has a hole, breaks one tackle, stiff arms, and just down by the tug of the jersey. Nice play there by Ezra Embry to just. Go along for the ride, grab him by the jersey, take him down after only four yards. And sometimes that's all you can do. Grab anything you can legally and hold on for dear life. Exactly. For dear yep. life. Yes. Wet guesser. That's not Wet no. guesser. That's actually yep. Hackman. And Hackman's going to get run out of bounds at the Here you go, Hackman. Another flag. Flag, Another flag on the play. After 19 yards, we'll see what the call is. And it's coming back. Another hold. So another 
call right. to hurt Lucas. Not Lucas, to hurt Daniel. Daniel. I'm looking at the Lucas score yeah. right now. Thanks. What are we at? Seven or eight holds now? My goodness. There's Lucas with the carry. So it'll bring up third and ten. Ackman gets a hole, 40, 45, wow. 50. Can he turn the afterburners on? One man wow, to beat and pushed out at the 25-yard line. It should have been for a loss. 41 yards on the run on third down and 10. Another home and kitchen supply. First down. Jacob Hackman, the backup, getting in on the party. 122 left in the half. It will be a running ha running clock to start half number two. Hackman looking to pass. Gets up, and then he's going to get taken down for a sack. It'll be a two-yard sack. Spencer Vrana. Danville takes the timeout. We'll take one with them. 110 left. Blue Devils on the roll. Robux Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. After the timeout, it'll be second down and 12 for Danville. Update from Mapleton, 24-6 over Northmore. So the Golden Knights, one of two undefeateds in the K-Mac, might be going down, may just leave Danville left after week three, but we'll find out. Still a half left there. Heard they had a couple touchdowns taken away, so yep. they can clean that up, you never know. Hackman takes the snap. It's a Screen. Dump off yep. to DeLauder. He's going to get across the 20, down to the 19-yard line. Six yards on the pass play. It'll bring up third down. DeLauder brought down at the 19-yard line. Third and seven for the Coach calls the timeout. I mean, you have three timeouts per half. Might as well... Use them. Can't take him in the half with you. Trying to get his backup quarterback here some experience down in the close to the red zone. See if they can punch it in here with a minute to go. Once again, stay tuned for the halftime show. We'll have the band show with the Danville band coming up at the break. Score from Lexington, 21-14 in favor of Clear Fork in that rivalry. We'll have a highlight of that one and show it to you on the pigskin tonight at 11.30. Blue Devils out of the timeout. Is that at Lexington or is that it's in the at Lexington. Yep. If it was at Clear Fork, we'd that's be right. live. That's true. Yeah, that's right. 
That game close to the half. Hackman waits for the motion, takes the snap. He's going to roll out to the right, looking, looking, still looking. Now he's just going to keep it, and he is going to be short of the first down. He might have gotten a yard or two, for about a yard. but it'll bring up fourth down. And Danville will once again talk this over. Can tell some hesitation here, a little bit of lack of confidence, afraid to take that risk at that throw. And Waited too long, so he had to tuck and run. Now I'd say maybe try for an extra point, but the last four attempts have been just through the uprights, but not to the distance at this. So maybe just getting some situational play in yep. before you get your number two, the full amount of number twos in for the second yep. half. As I... Browse Twitter, some scores from around Ohio. Oak Harbor 35, Port Clinton nothing. Right before the half. Ontario leading Madison 31 nothing. Wow. 28 7 now, Colonel Crawford over East Knox. Maslin 28, Mansfield Senior 10 with 324 left in the half. And at half, Pleasant 27, Whitehall, Yearling 6. We'll have all area scores on the pigskin tonight. And now, oh my. a timeout for Fairfield Christian. So let's get back to the scores. Coach? Tiffin 28, River Valley 13. Coach is still trying to teach here. That's a good sign. Not giving up here. Trying to make this an educational moment for both teams. Absolutely. 24-0 Highland over Crestview at the half. That game also on the OH Report tonight. Galleon 34, Upper Sandusky 6 with 30 seconds left in the half. We'll have a highlight of that one tonight on the pigskin with Madeline Zizuto. Perkins 35, Rocky River 20, with five minutes left in the half. Play resumed for the Blue Devils, fourth down and six. Waynedale 7, Triway 3 at the half. Nice ball. Oh, just, just little, out of reach. Just a little bit. Turnover on downs. So Fairfield gets the ball back with 34 seconds left. First and ten. Quick oh, throw and no. Miscommunication. He was flying and thought he was turning. That'll bring up second down. Thirty seconds left. Snap again, quick throw right side and over the head, but it was just forward. So not a fumble, it's third down. Third down as you take a look. At Blake Collip, he's had quite the first half. Back to pass, looking deep down Picked the off. field. It's intercepted. Briar Bozhart. And he's stiff for wow. the back, but he's going to lose more yards as he get back to midfield. But Briar 
It's kind of a Hail Mary throw there out of desperation. And Danville was waiting on it. Take a look at the replay. Caught it. And then tried to fight off a defender, but it was just enough time to get two more defenders in on him. Northmore scored his 24-12 at the half. And you got to think Golden Knights have a chance in that one with that touchdown. You got to think right here, Danville run the ball once, kneel on it maybe. They're just going to run a sweep. Wesley Payne taken down after a yard. And that's going to do it for the first half. We've played 24 minutes, and the Danville Blue Devils have this one well in hand. It's 41 to nothing. We'll take a break. When we come back. Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community.
next to the classic from the film Top Gun. Check out our twirlers and color guard as they spin away to Danger Zone. To conclude our show, the Blue Devil Band is going to show off our dance team. This song is a famous for its bass line and we're ready to jam out. Here's Queen, and no one bites the dust.
Roebuck Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Tonight's high school football game brought to you live and free on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors, Spearman Financial Services, Danville Feed and Supply, your local source for all of your hardware, lumber, and feed needs, Amato's Wood-Fired Pizza, Amato's Mount Vernon opened in 2017. We strive to create new exciting dishes outside of the norm. Knox Public Health, Danville Tire and Alignment for all your automotive and light truck service and repairs. Go Devils! Killbuck Savings Bank, community banking, it's what we do, it's who we are every single day. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community, and Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Thank you all for sponsoring this and many of our KMAC high school football games so we can be live and free for you, the fans, right here on EOH Report. As we welcome you back inside the Knox Public Health Halftime Show. Great performance by the Danville Marching Band. Their football team's got something to be happy about as well. 41-0 lead over Fairfield Christian Academy. It's going to be a running clock out of the half, Ken. But very, very impressive. The one lone stat that you probably could frown about for the Danville Blue Devils is the penalties. As we take a look at the stats, yes, it says Mount Vernon. We apologize. Our graphics are a little messed up right now. But it, it's the left side, that's the stats for Fairfield Christian. Danville has their own stats. And seven penalties for 70 yards, the lone bad stat for Danville. I'm sure as the folks at halftime. Uh, they definitely need to get, get things cleaned up. Uh, even with a blowout, you still got to stay disciplined. You still got to make yourself better. Um, I'm sure there's a focus at halftime. 15 first downs to two, 105 pass yards for Walker Weckesser, 238 yards on the ground. They are less than 100 yards in the second half away from 1,000 yards rushing as a team in three games. 343 total. 47 passing for Fairfield Christian, only 16 rush yards, 63 total yards for them. They also had three turnovers. The first one, the fumble on the kickoffs, the fumble on the first play from scrimmage for them, scooped and scored by Colopy. Then on the ensuing kickoff, another fumble. And then that interception in the second quarter. Danville has not turned the ball over yet. 
Any individual stats before we head to the break? Well, I mean, obviously we've, we've been talking a lot about the Lauder and Weka, sir, both throwing up some, some huge numbers there. Uh, I think the one thing we, we overlooked, though, is the, the defense of Danville, holding them to 16 yards rushing. One big pass play that was 47 yards, but you know a total of 63 yards against a team that's been throwing up a lot of numbers. Very impressive performance by the, by the defense. All right, we have about four minutes of the half and then three more if needed. So we're going to take you back to Hillsdale. Falcons, another team in Division 7, Region 25. We saw it last year. Brian and I were here for that regional quarterfinal. Amazing game. Hillsdale needed a two-point conversion. They went for the win, didn't get it. Danville moved on. They went to the regional title. We talked about that title game earlier. But we'll take a break for ourselves, and we'll show you Hillsdale. all over this game. Big time runner of the football and another huge run here and great line work up front from the big fellas carving out a nice hole and Jarvis hits it with a full head of steam and he's off to the races. Just barely gets pushed out of bounds there from Matt Spring. If Spring wasn't there, Strummer would have been six, but now Hillsdale knocking on Loudonville Redbirds territory. So a shaky start here for the Loudonville defense. We'll see if they can recoup as the Hillsdale Falcons have a drive going. Fickus takes a snap, big surprise, hands it off to Jarvis, tries to bounce it outside this time. Stopped maybe at the line of scrimmage. I think it'll be end up being a loss of one. Great play right there, was getting dragged down too, but just stuck an arm out there, got the shoestring tackle on Jarvis and stopped a potential big play from happening. And now we'll put Hillsdale behind the initial line, initial line of scrimmage. And you can tell Jarvis, one of those dudes has been in the weight room. He, he's already got a couple of nasty stiff arms on his stat sheet. Fickus now decides to keep it himself, but stonewalled once again at the line of scrimmage. Could bring up third and 11. Got us both. I thought Bo Moody had that football, Garrett. <laughs> I also did up here running the camera, but I was curious why nobody was tackling him. <laughs> I was like, a, must have got me up here up top. That's what's hard about running the camera storm with the read option offense like this. You never know who's going to touch the football. And not only is it hard for me, Storm, but it's also hard on the defense. It's so many misdirections, a lot of movement up front. You know, the, the wide receivers are in motion. The running backs are in motion. There's a lot of misdirection, and that's why so far it's been working for the Falcons. Fickus looks to the opposite side, has a man open in the end zone. Off of the finger tips there right there. Go. Cam Beachy was right there, but out of halftime, Storm. What kind of candy did he have? In the halftime locker room, it looked like he had a little too many butterfingers, man. I also like the popcorn reference because I think popcorn nowadays is maybe a little bit more popular. The buttery popcorn. I mean, would you prefer a Butterfinger or like a movie theater popcorn with butter? I mean, I think obviously the answer is what I just said. Oh, we'll get to that after this play. <laughs> Big shout out, though, to the Danville crew watching along at halftime. Looks like we're going to see an interesting play as Fickus takes the low snap, getting chased down by the Redbirds, heaves it up to the end zone, and it's caught! Jarvis! Somehow able to bring that one down. Fickus getting flushed out of the pocket after the low snap. Touchdown, Falcons! Beautiful pitch and catch. I'm not sure how Figgis even got this one to Jarvis, and what a versatile player Jarvis has been all night long. He's been able to run the football, and now he's shown he can pass, the, or, or, excuse me, catch the football on a beautiful wheel route. Nice little rub right there from the other receiver, and Figgis with a beautiful pass on the move too. As Hillsdale now beginning to pull away here, Storm, to start things out here in the third quarter. Looking at that replay, there is no point where that play should have resulted as a touchdown. As the split of the upright makes it 21-3, to we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Are you ready for the comeback? Three, two, one, let's go. Back here at Danville. What a pass by Jack Thickus. Now they're giving out. Hillsdale the two-score lead. Quarterback. Incredible. 
Gardington taking a 21-20 lead over Bucyrus as we're hearing the scores. 28-7 Crawford over East Knox. It's good for them. They've had a rough couple games starting off. Second quarter for Frederictown, 22-7. 7 Frederictown over Utica. We were talking about that at the half. Utica up and down. Blown out by Centerburg week one. Blow out Loudonville week two. And then Frederictown up big on them in week three. Yeah. It's just it, it's it's kind of a head scratcher yeah. for what they're doing. Also, early score, still haven't had an update, but 0-0 between Worthington Christian and Centerburg. That was a late first quarter, early second quarter score. So just about ready to go here. For half number two, it will be a running clock. Um, uh, I almost said Worthington Christian. Fairfield Christian needs to get this to under 30 points to have it back to a normal clock. So they have some work to do. And you got to think for Danville, this is – this is a good chance to see these younger players in here now. Definitely. You know, we saw the last couple of minutes of that first half. Uh, coach giving back up quarterback a chance to work with the, the number ones and, and giving him a little bit of experience. So you, you never know when he's going to have to step up and, and take it over that role. So it's good to give him some experience this early in the season. Announcing the Hillsdale score at the half, but we just saw. You folks just saw live and free the first touchdown of the second half. So just about ready to kick it away. Walker Weckesser back to boot this. Also, shout out to KMAC Plus, our buddy Mason, over on the YouTube side, giving updates of games. And we're underway. Third quarter action. That's taken by Hudson Harper across the 30, and that'll be where they will start first and 10. Jesse Hutchinson on the return, brought down by Caleb Lucas and... I'm curious to see if Danville goes with their number ones here to start the second half. I doubt with the numbers that uh, Fairfield Christian has that they'll have a JV game scheduled tomorrow, so I'm sure they're going to... Yeah, only 21 get, players. Right, get the younger kids some playing time tonight. They'll get a chance to stay at home, maybe watch some film. Hand off to Blair, still on his feet. He's going to work his way across, get a nice four or five yards for Blair. Give him five, brings up second and five for Danny. Good way to start the second half. Watch some film and watch Ohio State play Indiana at 3.30 and then the West Virginia Mountaineers with their biggest upset <laughs> in 30 years over Penn State at 7.30. I can, I can dream, folks. I can dream. Snap back, another handoff to Blair. He's met at the line of scrimmage, maybe got a yard. Nothing yeah, they're going to give him a yard. He'll bring up third and about four. It was Harper on the carry that time. I'm curious to watch the uh, quarterback battle unfold over the next two or three games for the Buckeyes. All they have to do is just throw it somewhere around Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. Yeah. All they have to do is just hand it off easily to their running backs. Yeah. And they'll do the rest. It's kind of like the movie Friday Night Lights. Just give it to Booby. Let him do the rest. <laughs> Third down and five. Going to be a pass. Quick throw left side and through the hands of two players. Almost made it to a third receiver, but through his hands as well. It's fourth down. I was listening to the 610 uh, and the analysts last night, and they were doing the, the – uh, Situation where the Buckeyes are in, where the the uh, your 16 year old son has keys to the Ferrari. So <laughs> when he's given that first time to drive the Ferrari, the uh, 
let him go full blast, or do you take some safe uh, spins around the block? And I'm sure that's what's going to happen with Kyle McCord to bar is some safe spins around the block. High punt. Takes a Fairfield Christian bounce, so that could have been disastrous for them. It's going to get downed right at the 30, where Danville will take over first and 10. That was nearly blocked. Nice job by Blair to at least loft it up there. Had enough spin, though, that it bounced at the 46 and then took 16 yards of roll to at least back up the Blue Devils a little bit here. Clock starts now on the running clock. Got to start with the backup quarterback, Jacob Hackman. Bose Hart in motion. DeLauder's still in there as well. Takes big the handoff, hole. has a big hole. Wow. Cuts across. 45, trying to knock a couple players off. Gets up to the 48. 18 yards on the carry. And it's another home and kitchen supply first down. Oh. And now we have an injured Blue Devil. Maybe some crampage. Hopefully that's all it is, and yet it is. It looks like that's Blake Colopy. Yeah, it's his hamstring. That was a huge hole in that last play, Travis. Let's take a look at it one more time. We'll see the tail end here, but I'll, I'll, I'll reverse this back. Here's the replay. And yeah, watch the cutback too. I mean, he is very elusive. Yep. Call be up on his feet. He's able to walk off on his own. Good vision, good strength, good speed. Uh, obviously, Fairfield Christian's defensive line did not has not played an offensive line like this in the first two weeks, and I'm sure they're. They're getting a little worn down here, tired, mentally and physically defeated. And those mental mistakes early on really yep. crushed any chance of a, yep. an upset. It wears on you. Screen pass to Lucas. Lucas still on his feet, getting brought, carried by his own player close to the first down. Now we're going to get a, a penalty. You're not able to – you're not allowed to grab him from behind and carry him like that, so it's going to be a – a flag on Danville. Now you're allowed to push, Just trying but to grabbing him and pulling is a no-no. Yeah. It's a five-yard penalty. So that'll, so that'll back him up to the 49. A net of three yards. Make it first and seven. Seven twenty running third quarter clock. It's going to be a sweep to Nate Stevens. Gets the corner, gets the first down, and pushes ahead nice to the 38. 11 yards, and it's a first down. Down to the 38 yard line, and a blue double, first down. 17th Blue Devil, first down. First and 10 from the 38. Hand off to Lauder. He's going to get five, six, seven yards. Because he won't get brought down. Take a look at the replay here. 
just constantly churning those legs. Knocking, knocking people aside. Give him six. Be second and four. They break the huddle with under six left in the quarter. Delauder, big hole, right side, 20-15-10, gets knocked out of bounds. Man, he's quick. Twenty yards on the run. And you just see once he hits that hole, he turns it up a couple notches and just gets shoved out of bounds. First and ten from just outside the ten at the twelve. DeLauder in the Wildcat, he's going to hand it to Hackman. Hackman, left side, runs into his own offensive player who was right by Hudson Harper. He gets taken down for no gain. So it looked like Lucas was trying to block Hudson Harper, but blocked him right into Hackman for the gain of one. DeLauder again in the Wildcat. Hackman, he's fakes oh, he the down. run. Oh, DeLauder breaks one tackle, makes his way back to the 15-yard line, but that's going to be a loss of two. Third down. Defensive lineman read it well, but he just couldn't hold on to him. It did give a couple of his teammates enough time to swarm, though, yep. and get the loss. So third down and 12 from the 15. DeLauder again in the Wildcat. Red again. He's going to throw, throw it, it and short. It'll bring up fourth down. Once again, on a throwing down for DeLauder, he's getting rushed and unable to get a good throw out. So it'll bring up fourth. Coach is still working on different options for, for things he can use later in the season. Four wide. Hackman back at quarterback, takes the snap. Looking, looking, getting rushed. He'll throw it towards the end zone. It's a jump ball, and it is out of the back of the end zone. Incomplete turnover on downs. Did you see the uh, block DeLauder laid down? Yes, I did. Holy right smokes. here. Holy completely smokes. pancaked the linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be a home and kitchen supply first down for the Knights as they hold and prevent the touchdown. 2.52 remaining. Clock will start. Small victories. Yeah, you're now at the point where they're just trying to build towards next week. Right, exactly. Things you can talk about positively at the end of the game. And timeout. We'll take one with them. 2.36 left. Third quarter, Danville got this one well in hand. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. The comeback. Are you ready for the comeback? 
Out of the timeout, first down and 10, Fairfield Christian. Update from Mapleton, Northmore scored to cut it at 24-19 early in the second half. Nice run there by Danny Blair. Gonna get nine yards on the play. Nope, give it first 10, down. it's a first down. A Hoban Kitchen Supply first down, the third of the night for Fairfield Christian. Nice run, gets the outside, avoids a tackler, and gets the yards. Nice little burst of speed there. And that's something that Coach has said about this season too, is they've been really keying on Blair this season after what he did last year, over 1,400 rushing yards. TJ Blair in motion. And it's going to be a handoff to Danny up the middle. Breaks a couple more tackles. And he gets 10 more yards, another first down. Danny Blair on the carry, Landon Lyons on the top. So two runs, two first down runs first down for Danny Blair. And if anything, this is building the confidence of that offensive line. Definitely. And Blair despite it going against some of the number twos from Danville, but that doesn't matter. It's all about momentum going into the next week. This time it's going to be a handoff to TJ. Reverses field across the 40, 45. 12 yards on the carry and a third straight first down as we've hit one minute left in the third quarter. Another night first down at the 47-yard line. Fairfield, Fairfield Christian, Christian not giving up, showing some life here. This will go to the fourth quarter unless they get a score here, but your Fairfield Christian get one on the board. Hand off. Blair again. Oh, he's, he's got room. He's, he's going to go. No flags. Touchdown. Fairfield Christian are on the board. Danny Blair in for the 53 yards touchdown run. 53 yards. That's great quickness there. So you take a look. Clock's still going to run, so that will run out the end of the quarter. But are they going to give the extra point attempt before the quarter? They will. So an untimed down. Rusty Hutchinson, snap down, kick away, it's good. and it is good. We've played Extra three good. here in Danville. In Running clock 31. continues when we come back. Fair Danville Christian. on their way to 3-0. and Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Fourth quarter underway after the Fairfield Christian score. 41-7, Travis Berardi back here with Ken Parrott and Danny Blair, 56 yards to Paydirt. So 
we take a look at that touchdown run one more time. But something to build on. Definitely. You know, you're down 41 or nothing at the half. No point going in at halftime screaming and yelling. Um, I'm sure they talked about some things to work on, and, and you're going up against one of the best teams in, in the area, and you're, you're showing some positivity. Another front runner in the KMAC, Northmore's come all the way back. They've taken a 26-24 lead over Mapleton in the third quarter. And if this, this score probably will hold up, but if that score holds up as... We got a four-yard gain by DeLauder, but if both teams were to win, the both scores were to hold and both teams were to win next week, big matchup here in week number five. Nice, yeah. An early indicator of who would be in the driver's seat for a KMAC championship. And you and I will have the chance to call that in two weeks. Yes, can't, can't wait. Update from Hillsdale. They've kicked a field goal, now lead 24-3 over rival Loudonville. Sweep the Bozart. Bozart, some room. Give him 12, and it's another home and kitchen supply first down. Update from Bellevue. Bellevue 29, Shelby 20 heading to the fourth. After three, Ontario 38, Madison 0. Running clock in. North Robinson, 42-7, Colonel Crawford over East Knox. Wow. Calvert, 35, St. Paul, 19 after three. That's another region scores. Another sweep to Wayne to Wesley Payne. He's going to get taken out on the pass. Down to the 26-yard line and a Blue Devils first down. 16 yards on the play. And as I say that, Mapleton takes the lead right back, 30 to 26. First and 10, Blue Devils. And that's going to be a snap infraction on Danville. Let's take a look at that first down replay. First and 15. Fakes the handoff, gives it to DeLauder, and DeLauder's met in the backfield, still trying to fight his way <laughs> forward. But he'll lose one yard. It'll be second down. One of the first few times tonight that the Lauders had a negative play. Yeah, second string offensive line's not giving the holes that he was getting there in the first half. Monroeville leading 33-7 over Seneca East. Maslin leading Mansfield Senior 35-10 at the half. Hackman's going to keep it himself. Has a couple runners in front of him. He tries to push his lineman ahead, and they just both fall. Another loss, and it'll be third down. So he tried to lean his lineman, weird. but they both fell at the same time. It's like dominoes. One guy knocked them both down. So third and long now from the 36. So we go under eight minutes left. Snap back, Hackman rolling, running, looking, looking. Now he lets go and oh. just beyond the reach of Josh Byers Jr. And it'll be fourth down and long. Fairfield Christian's defensive line has done a very good job of uh, pursuing the quarterbacks tonight. Been under pressure most of the evening. And we will have our first punt of the evening by Danville, if I'm correct. Second. 
had won second play. Had won in the first half. That's yeah. right. They did kick yep. that away. Yeah. Yep. After the penalties. So the sixth punt. Second punt. Takes a big hop. And out of bounds inside the 10. A little coffin corner kick. Take a look at the replay. That's a great job. Down at the 7. Yep. Especially with a running clock like this, he could. See, maybe the last possession. And we'll take a timeout here. We'll go with them. 6.34 left in regulation. Danville up 42 to 7. Clock begins the run once again, down to 6.30 remaining. Snap. Oh. Taken down in the backfield, a big stop by the Blue Devils. So a loss of five, second and 15. Clock under six minutes left here in the game. Make sure to stay tuned for the Knox Public Health post game show. We'll have our interview with our MVP. And I think I'm going defense tonight. Handoff up the middle, carrying a pile. We'll see if they got anything out of it. And actually, they're going to lose some yards. So maybe Coach getting after that second string defensive line after that touchdown run, firing them up a little bit. Third and long. Five minutes left. Remember tonight, 11.30, around 11.30, the Friday Night Pigskin. We have highlights of this one. Oh, snap. Little bubble screen. And they'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a little bit more. We'll see where they mark them off. Hutchinson on the, Hutchinson on the catch. They will give him one beyond the original line of scrimmage. So six yards. It'll be fourth and nine and a punting down. Ken and I will be in Loudonville next week. More KMAC action as they open up against Mount Gilead. Should be a good game. I'm interested to see the yep. Mount Gilead squad. Yep. I think Tough loss to Upper Sandusky and Caden Holman and company. So that takes a nice bounce. I'm interested to see what the Indians can do in Loudonville. We'll have that game next week. And then two weeks from now, Two weeks from now, we'll be right back here. Will it be undefeated's Northmore and Danville, or 
Well, we'll see. Looks like, but it'll be a big one. Looks like they got a shootout going on in, in Mapleton right now. Clock starting again at four minutes. Whole new backfield for Danville. The water will finish his night. Bad snap, but right to the running back who is hit immediately. And taken down. Big loss on the play. Brandon Kaufman brought down in the backfield. Loss of about four on the play. Second down and four. Four yard loss, second and 14 now. And good thing the back was right there. If not, that would have gone yeah. about 10 yards behind the quarterback. Yeah. Nolan Ridgeway, now the play caller. Third quarterback in for Danville tonight. And as a head coach, you'd love to see that. No injuries with the first two. Just see being able to get all three quarterbacks in there just in case. Takes that snap. tough snap. Hands it off to Levi Furey. Foray gets three yards. It'll be third down and 11. Foray, the junior wide receiver, D-back, taking that sweep. And they're actually going to give him four, so it's third and 10. 2.30 left in regulation. I think it's safe to say in the game, though, for me. Yeah. 24-3 the score, Hillsdale and Loudonville with 11 minutes left. Golden Knights just took a safety. They're now trailing by seven. Bubble screen. Foray again. Hit in the backfield. Nice open field tackle by Braden Stem. It's going to be a loss of three. It'll bring up fourth down. And now we'll get a timeout. Knights are down six. 26 32. 32 26. Yep. Let's take you back to Hillsdale for that game. Down here for the Falcons. Brock Bauer. Oh, big hit. Ugh. After making a couple of moves, takes a big hit. Let's take a look at this one once again. Guess what, Storm? What's up, Bob? We got another flag, buddy. <clears throat> Maybe helmet to helmet on that one? Let's see. Back to action here. Is Danville going to punt it away? Fourth quarter action, Lucas 41-7 over Smithville. Wow. Taking out all their aggression on Smithville. Smithville's not a bad team no. either. They're going to compete for the middle or towards the top of the WCAL this season. Danville just letting the clock, play clock run down to the last five seconds before snapping this as we're under 90 seconds left in the game. They do get the snap off, and it's a good punt. Oh, Hutchinson fumbles it, gets it right back at the 20, across the oh, 30, he's got 35, room. 40, One to beat. 45. Can he be caught by DeLauder? And DeLauder rides him out of bounds. But what a return. Nice return. Hutchinson muffed it for a second, got it back, and then took off. He's quick. And if it wasn't for Cole DeLauder out there in his speed, might be 42-13. Probably lucky they didn't get a late uh, hit there on the sidelines, too. Coach Blum walking away without a headset. Kind of not happy at that return. Clock runs again. 45 seconds left. Well, Parker Couch now in at quarterback. Hands it off. It'll be second down. 
That was Braden Stem on the carry. Give him one. Second down. This may be the last play of the game. Yep, it will. So Danville, not quite to their score of 61 per game, but well, they they're still going to average about 50-something going into week four. Played a backup quarterback at a continuous clock. Deep throw, and it is in and out of the hands of Hutchinson. And that will do it. So we take a look at the final play of the ball game. In and out of the hands. But the Blue Devils move to three and oh. 42-7 the final. We'll take a break. When we come back, our MVP brought to you by Amato's Wood Fired Pizza. Inside our Knox Public Health post-game show. We'll be back right here, live and free, on the OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? Savings Bank. You can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Tonight's high school football live stream brought to you live and free thanks to our generous sponsors, Spearman Financial Services, Danville Feed and Supply, your local source for all of your hardware, lumber, and feed needs. Amato's Wood Fired Pizza. Amato's Mount Vernon opened in 2017. We strive to create new and exciting dishes outside of the norm. Knox Public Health. Danville Tire and Alignment. For all your automotive and light truck service and repairs, go Devils. Killbuck Savings Bank. Community banking. It's what we do. It's who we are every single day. Knox Community Hospital. In the community. For the community. And Home and Kitchen Supply. Your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. One more quick break. We'll be right back with our Amato's Wood-Fired Pizza MVP right here live and free on the OH Report. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. This one work. This one's your back. Flip it. Oh, my bad. You're good. And then you should be able to hear me. Yes, sir, I can. All right. Perfect. That is perfect. Oh, okay. And there he is. Tonight's MVP. Didn't even know we were back, so let's go right into it. Tonight's wood-fired, Amato's wood-fired MVP is the man that really got things started. A scoop and score up 6-0. He also had another fumble recovery. That is Blake Colopy. Congratulations, Blake. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's been dominant for you guys the first three games. Defensively coming into this game, you had seven takeaways. Now you're up to ten for the season. Just uh, what has been the fire behind this defense? Man, we won it this year, you know. After that JFK loss game, you know, we, we have unfinished business, you know. We, we won it. So we play the fire under our butt every single, every single snap. Um, take me through the scoop and score. Um, it snapped over the quarterback's head. It looks like he was going to dive on it, and then it just bounces right up to you. Just that's, that's a touchdown that any linebacker dreams of. A ball just bounces in front of you, and then if you look behind you, you had seven of your teammates pretty much forming a wall behind you. you it was an easy touchdown, but just what, were you go what was going through your mind when that ball bounced right into your hands? I was just thinking we need to get, we need to get some more points on the board, you know. We want to win this game. I got a shout out. I got to give a shout out to my defensive end, Caleb Lucas. He's the reason that I made that play. He uh, came through, shoved the quarterback down, you know, the ball popped through, and I look back and I got all my team, you know. That we we play as a team. Absolutely. And well, last year I know a lot of motivation. Coach was telling me about it after, you know, before this game. But you know, you were inches away from defeating JFK on that fourth down play, and he said, right back in January, you guys got right back at it. Over 30 players were in the gym, were in the weight room, working and working. He says you only get six days off from those scheduled days. None of none of you guys did took those days off just uh how motivated are you guys knowing that you have a chance to possibly get back to where you were or maybe even further with the guys you have especially with the transfer in cold water let me tell you we have a we have a fire under our butt we have we are great up front and the water runs the ball really hard yes he does i i i would i love blocking for cold water he i i know i know he's got my back and i got his okay so now in the kmac play Step one check, undefeated through non-conference. You're going in the KMAC play starting next week. What do you guys need to do to be 4-0? We're just going to keep rolling. We're just going to stick to our game plan, do what our coaches tell us to do, and we're, we're just going to keep handing it to teams. All right, and lastly, anybody else that you'd like to shout out? Look into the camera and go for it, my friend. I want to give a big shout out to our offensive line. We some big boys up front. We get stuff done. All right, there you have it. Tonight's MVP, Blake Colopy. Two fumble recoveries and one scoop and score. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, sir. Are you ready for the comeback?
Roebuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Time now for the Knox Public Health post-game show where it was all Danville from start to finish. 42-7, to seven, the final. Travis Berardi back here with Ken Parrott. And let's get right into the final stats. And like I said, some graphic problems. Left side, Mount Vernon is actually Fairfield Christian Danville. Oh, they're Danville. But 18 first downs to six. The one drive for the touchdown. Garbage time. They do get some first downs out of it. 101 passing yards for Danville, 319 on the ground, 420 total yards. They're almost to 1,000 rushing yards as a team through three games. That is phenomenal for them. 146 total yards, 105 on the ground, most once again coming on that one drive. The scoring drive, it's something they can build on. It's something Fairfield Christian can build on. Definitely. Uh, you know, we knew coming into this game, Cole DeLauder is going to be the workhorse for this team. Uh, uh, Walker Weckeser had a great first half, didn't play any offense in the second half. Coach had a chance to get some seconds in there and, and even some thirds, uh, some playing time, uh, which is going to help them down the road. Uh, I think this, this win is a tale of two different schedules. We, we, we know what Danville can do. Uh, we were a little suspect with Fairfield Christian's previous wins considering the two teams they've beat have not won a game yet. So we saw that tonight. And nine penalties for 80. That's something that Danville's going to have to work on before they go into K-Mac play. The one blemish on that, on that mark for them. Yeah, they gave up the touchdown late. Second team, you know, after that, the possession after that, though, the second team defense looked pretty darn right. good as right. well. Let's just take a look at the one of the many rituals here at Danville, the fans and family just meeting on the field. But uh, any, any final words, Ken, before we wrap up week number three and get ready for Loudonville Mount Gilead next week? Uh, well, I, I can't wait for the K-Mac to get started. I think it's going to be a, a, a fun uh, league season. We're, we're going to find out how good Danville is. We've got a couple of the teams in the league that have a chance to, to run with them. So it should be a good uh, rest of the season here. And Mount Gilead right now leading Grove City 14-0. So they could be 2-1 going in against a Loudonville squad. But we got to get back to the studio because we have the Friday Night Pigskin coming up in about two hours. So that will wrap things up for us here. 42-7 is the final. Fairfield Christian at Grove City Christian on Friday. Danville heading to Fredericktown who is sneaking their way up there. Also a score from Mapleton, 40-33 to in that shootout between Mapleton and Northmore as they head to the fourth. But that will wrap it up. I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible tonight. Ken Parrott on color commentary. And everybody else that helped make things possible tonight. Anyway, we're not getting that working, so I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible tonight. Ken Parrott on color commentary. Jeremy Peoples, camera operator, showing you the cool views tonight. Spearman Financial Services and Danville Feed and Supply, our scoreboard sponsors. Amato's Wood-Fired Pizza, our MVP sponsors. Knox Public Health, our pregame, halftime, postgame sponsor. Danville Tire and Alignment, our instant replay sponsor. Hillbuck Savings Bank, Knox Community Hospital and Amato's, our commercial sponsors. Home and Kitchen Supply, our first down sponsor. 
as well as the Dan Danville Athletic Department for allowing us to be here tonight to show you this game and the OHSAA for allowing us to bring you these games live and free. That'll do it. For Ken Parrott, I'm Travis Berardi saying so long from Danville.